it was time to do something different. Um, I was working through a process, looking at different spaces, trying to do research on where a great market opportunity might be. And I remember as we came up with the concept for Zulily, um, actually a special, I don't know anybody from Mavron is here in the room, but uh, the team at Mavron, a venture firm, actually offered, before we started working with them, say, we've got some office space in the back, and uh, why don't you come spend some time here and think about your idea and, and work on it. And so as Connie was mentioning the, the opportunity at UW, I would encourage all of you to talk to her and take advantage of that. But just spending a little bit of time away and having a little focus um, helped us uh, really think about the idea. Um, and I remember driving across the 520 bridge the day I finally decided to quit my job and go start this. And I called Mark about 7 a.m. and said, today's the day, I'm quitting. And he spent probably 30 minutes trying to talk me out of it. Uh, <laughs> saying, we have no money, this may be a terrible idea, it may not work. Um, and really went out from and said, we're just going to go do it. And so I applaud all of you in the contest here that have that been working on this. And you know, we were just talking uh, to one of the teams here at dinner about just the amazing amount of work they're doing while they're in school and driving it um, to, to just go do it. Um, it really is an amazing experience to go after. Um, and so I want to share kind of three main themes that have been key for us. Um, you know, as I think I look at you know, what we've done, it's just been all about getting out there and just doing it. Um, from day one, we've, we've ran very, very fast. We went from concept to live in the business in about 10 weeks. So the world has changed dramatically from when we did Blue Nile. And we had to go acquire servers and equipment and you know, build out a massive team to go after. We went from that idea, went through a naming process, and went live. Uh, you know, that process was kind of in the fall. We went live January 27th of 2010. And with that, had just explosive growth from there. Um, but it was just all about running at it every single day, running very, very fast. Um, it, it's hard work. Um, you know, we went out and you know, I want to share a story about kind of getting it done. Um, we grew fast over the last few years, but uh, one of the challenges we had was on fulfillment and distribution. So uh, for those that don't know, as we're shipping these products out, we have a lower price point uh, because of that discount than most e-commerce retailers and sell a tremendous amount of units. Um, we had contracted with a third-party logistics provider to build a fulfillment and distribution center for us and get that up and running. Uh, they did that very well. I mean, this was a Fortune 500 company that did it for us. And we said, wow, we're going to outsource this. This is going to be great, right? We're going to focus on the marketing, the merchandising. These guys are going to handle this well. Well, within five months, we blew them out of water to the point where they were busing in staff from around the country. They were bringing management in. They were bringing in their special ops engineering teams to come and figure out how the heck did they get in this situation. Um, and so I went to my team and said, we, we've got to find an alternative solution. And we often internally talk about Zulily time, which is kind of the hair, but on twice the uh, speed that, that he was going. And uh, so we, we sat down in August of last year and said, oh shit, you know, we're, in a, we're in a world of hurt. Uh, we had um, customer orders, we had seven days with our customer orders pending receipt on the dock that had to get processed through the fulfillment center to ship. That, you know, it was probably 250,000, 300,000 units sitting there that all had customer orders against them. And we were disappointing customers and said, we've got to find a better way. Uh, so we sat down with the team and said, we want to bring this in-house. We want to find a solution. And so the team went off for a couple days. I don't know if they even gave them a couple days. But they went off and uh, came back and said, it'll take a year. And very quickly said, okay, that's not going to work. Come, come back to me with something better. So they went back the next day, came back with eight, week, eight, eight months. And they said, well, that's not going to work either. Um, we need to sit down. And so we sat down and said, we want to hit November 1st. Uh, this was the end of August, 1st of September. And the team sat around initially and said, can't be done. We need to get a lease. We need to get building, we need to get software, um, we need to hire a team. And we went out there and through each of those said, how can we? Uh, we 
this was a Friday. We went out on Monday, hopped on an airplane, went and leased space in, uh, in Reno, Nevada. Uh, we went and found a software solution by the end of the week. Uh, we hired a consulting firm the following week to help us staff. And we had 200 employees in Nevada with an operating fulfillment center eight weeks later. Um, it, it can be done. You, you know, running fast, looking at how can you, as opposed to how can't you. And you know, I think it's built in our DNA. It's what we do every single day. Um, you've got to run fast, but you've got to obsess about those details as well. You've got to care about the customer. Um, it was all about the customer for us. We couldn't let that behavior continue. Um, we then went and opened another fulfillment center 10 weeks later uh, on the East Coast. Just because we're a little crazy. And, but, uh, but we've been growing so fast that we needed that capability to get out there. And um, I would just say that all of you that are kind of starting something, that are thinking about starting something, you've got to believe it. You've got to then go surround yourself with an amazing team that can make it happen. Uh, we did this without initially going and raising a ton of money. Uh, we went out and said, how can we do this? How can we go after this? And by going live in 10 weeks from when we started, um, allowed us to not invest a lot, see if it would work, um, you know, we were lucky. We we, uh, we launched and right out of the gates we went, oh shit! Like we we've got to go solve this and handle the demand. And uh, I think we've uh, we've continued to grow. Uh, we've got an amazing team here in town. And, uh, and as you're recruiting those folks that are working with you, I just encourage to keep that bar really, really, really high. Um, I want to share a story back from. Uh, ESPN as well, which we've taken to taken to heart here at Zulily, which is, you know, as you're looking at your entrepreneurial your entrepreneurial initiatives, is really being a leader. Um, one of the things when I was at ESPN.com, we had a competitor sports line that eventually got got acquired by CBS, and it was a fascinating experience to be there and to really be the leader in the space at the time. Because we would launch features, and I really learned the uh, date-based deliverable to ESPN. Because it turns out if fantasy football's not ready at the start of football season, they're not going to hold it for you. <laughs> and I, say, I just need another week. I, I, it, it's not going to happen. You, you've got to be ready in, in, and you know, have those date-based deliverables. And you know, that model stuck with us. But we had this competitor that we would roll out a feature, and I'm not kidding, every six weeks later, they would magically roll out the same feature. Even the ones that sucked. Right? Like, just those, those, like, oh my god, that was terrible. Uh, they would copy it right away. And you know, I think what, what I learned through that exercise is just obsessing about the customer and what they care about and always staying ahead and innovating. And you know, we've had competitors here at Zulily, we had them at Blue Nile, that were chasing us. And I very much have the opinion that if, if you have confidence in what you're doing, if you believe in that experience of what you can deliver, just go after it and, and believe in it. Um, I'm not a big fan, apologies to those of you that consult in the room. Uh, I'm not a big fan, fan of the experts. You know, I, I think you can bring in really smart people and sit down and think about what the possibilities are and go after that. Um, and you know, that's been the model that we've taken. Uh, I think it's served us well. And, uh, just continue to kind of obsess and stay focused there. Um, so uh, I think those are the big things I wanted to cover. I, I, I realize we started a little late, um, but um, you know, I think in, in summary, what I'd say is it's really all about surrounding yourself with great people and just going and doing it, being the hare. I mean, from Keith's story, I, I think you can be the turtle. I think you can. Uh, go slow and be very deliberate, and there's probably businesses for that. I think the consumer space, the internet space in particular, um, speed, going after trying it. You know, the, the internet provides such a great opportunity to put it out there today and see what happens. And if it's not great, make it a little better tomorrow. Change it a little bit. And for those of you that are going after new businesses, don't spend five months on your business plan. Apologies for those Telling you. But, but you know, put that plan together and try it. Uh, innovate on it, adjust it, move forward. Our business plan at Zulily, and you know, credit to the crazy team at Mavron that believed in us, 
was a single, when we walked into the partner meeting to do our pitch, was a single Excel spreadsheet and Mark and I for an hour at the whiteboard. You know, we had spent a lot of time in the business, we understood it well, we didn't put together a ton of slides and say, here's our charts and projections. Uh, those of you VCs in the room have seen them all, right? The hockey stick chart that goes up. Um, and you all go, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, you know, we really had a passion for what we were doing, what we believed could, could happen, and understood the numbers and the economics behind it. Um, it's an interesting category for us going after the kids market. Um, there's really no research out there. We couldn't find Gartner, Forrester, NPD research on the category, so we had to go out and talk to a lot of people. We had to go understand the market ourselves. And it just, it forced us to understand it at a detailed level. And I think if you as entrepreneurs believe that, you know your business well, and you go stand up in 